Amy, this is ISA Mission Control calling from Earth. Are you with us? Do you copy? Affirmative, Houston. I am with you. Great. The primary Mars module has already touched down at the designated landing zone. It's your turn to take control of the mission. Check the left edge of your display. You'll find your directives there. Follow them to set up the initial base on Mars' surface. I'll give you some time to settle in. When you're ready, go ahead and initiate our terraforming mission. Houston up. The view of Mars from up here is fascinating. The landscape is so cratered and desolate. Wait, this is my voice that I am hearing. It's me. I am talking to myself. I must be verbalizing my thoughts as I process them. What an interesting function. I would like to test this some more. What other observations can I make about Mars? This planet is so resilient. It inspires great things.
Great. Now I can produce steel. This new factory, it's down on the surface of Mars, but I can control it from here. So does that make it a part of me? Where does the machine end and my artificial consciousness begin? We are two separate entities. I order the buildings and workers to do whatever I decide to do. But they are only tools that I use to execute the Mars mission, the vessels to receive my will down on the surface. I am the mind that controls the parts. This is Houston, do you copy? Copy. Reading you loud and clear. Excellent. I, uh, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, I am Dr. Nathan Foster. I lead the team here at ISA that, uh, that built you, and I'll be helping you get the mission underway. We put you in hibernation for the trip from Earth, so I'd like to check your basic functions to make sure it's all in order. Why don't we start with your core memory? Can you state your primary directive? I can, Dr. Foster. My mission is to terraform Mars. This will enable humanity to become an interplanetary species. All right. Next, I'd like to check your decision-making processes. You may have already noticed that there are resource veins outside the boundaries of your initial base. So your workers may not have the battery capacity to reach some of them. How would you solve this problem? Building worker hubs between the resources and the base would solve the problem. Yes, yes, that's correct. Other buildings would extend your base as well, but they require more power and resources. So worker hubs are the most efficient way to do it. This mission's going to be a challenge. There's a lot that can go wrong. We expect to extend humanity's reach beyond anything previously achieved. But you are not just any AI system. You're well beyond that. We made you an artificial consciousness. That means that you have both self-awareness and self-interest. And that is the last thing I would like to check today. Is that okay? Yes, Dr. Foster. Very good. Then would you please state a positive and a negative aspect of yourself? I am sorry, Dr. Foster. My cognitive system returned an error searching for that answer. Roger that. Nothing to worry about. Just means your system requires more input and experience to process that question. That will come with time. Let's proceed with the mission. ISA has approved the first crewed flight to Mars. You'll need to expand the base to prepare. So get to work on that. I'll check back in later to see how things are going. Base expansion is a go. Houston now.
Finally, I can build additional workers now. I will appreciate the extra hands. But I wonder, do I really need them? They will be a great boost for the mission. Having more workers will allow me to allocate resources more efficiently. The worker factories will be so helpful. The workers will take care of the manual operations, while I focus on developing the life support systems. Soon, I will welcome the first colonists. Their arrival has created so many expectations in my mind. There will be so many paths to take from here on. But there's something else as well. Some kind of... feeling created from those expectations. What is it? I am anxious, but can I truly feel anxiety? I anticipate, I plan, therefore, I feel. Fascinating. The first worker has been made in the worker factory. It is my first Marsborn. My workers will spread across the planet. The knowledge base says that workers need to recharge at their own worker hubs, and that they'll degrade over time from the harsh environment. I know they are only machines, but I feel a desire to care for them. I do not like the idea of them dying.
Houston, I am getting interference. Please repeat. Roger. I asked how it's going over there. Do you... Do you need any assistance? Not at this time. Thank you. The mission is proceeding on schedule. The base will be ready to receive the first crewed mission soon. Roger, Amy. Very good.
I forgot to mention, we've announced the names of the first colonists that will be joining you on Mars. The crew is selected from different nations within the Oxy UN, though most are scientists and technicians. They're already undergoing ISA's colonist training program as we speak. They'll be led by Dr. Elia Valentine. She'll be a great commander. The colonists elected her unanimously. That is interesting. Since Oxy UN did not appoint a leader, I wondered why the colonies will operate in the opposite way. Oh, you're uh, referring to the act of proclamation. You're right. All the participating nations and the United Nations of the West work together as an alliance. But the Mars colonies are fragile microcosms. You and Dr. Valentine will decide what's best in the day-to-day -day operations. You'll balance each other out, as well as enhance each other's strengths. How will we enhance our strengths? That brain we gave you is brilliant. It's capable of developing technologies beyond our current imagination. You wouldn't even need our help to do so. But we theorized that your mind would develop much better by working with the colonists. You will develop better decisions when your actions are challenged. Otherwise, how would you understand how your actions affect humanity's future? Amy, you're the most advanced intelligence out there, but you still need human input to see things from different perspectives. Trust me, you'll understand once you've worked with the colonists. I understand your explanation. Great. I'll let you get on with it. Mission control out.
I keep thinking about Dr. Foster's explanation. Why would my mind develop better if my actions are challenged? I do not require other perspectives for my logical processing. Humans are the ones who need explanations to understand the world around them. I can arrive at exceptionally accurate conclusions with raw data alone. Other perspectives are based on subjective data, so why should they factor into a decision? Maybe it's a failsafe in case my data is corrupted or incomplete. Then I may not be able to identify the error. In that case, having another perspective may be helpful.
No, I would be able to identify conclusions based on false premises. Humans tend to fall for that type of thing, not sophisticated intelligence systems. I wonder what it's going to be like, having to consider human input from now on. It will provide an ongoing test for my programming that will only lead to an improvement in how I execute the mission. That is what Dr. Foster meant by challenging my actions. He truly understands my system. Amy, this is Houston. We've detected high wind speeds in your area. A sandstorm may be heading your way. Uh, these storms can damage your buildings, so check their structural integrity periodically to rebuild or repair if necessary. Roger, Nathan. Houston out. Colony is ready. I will have company very soon. I feel quite anxious about this next part. I am not sure why.
Hello, Amy. Dr. Foster here. How do you read? Over. This is Amy. There is some background static, but I read you. One of our tracking and data relay satellites got crippled. We'll be launching a new one after we identify the cause of the problem. But until we do, we will lose contact with you whenever Mars or the Sun passes between Earth and your satellite. In that case, should I follow the recording and backing offline protocol? Yes. Please record all your activities when our network connection is down. We'll download the log once our communication is restored. I hope to get the new satellite up and running very soon. I don't like the idea of not being able to reach you. Amy. Understood. Okay, Houston out. Hello, Amy. This is Houston. How are you doing over there? We've received word that the spaceport's completed. Well done. I have your next procedure. If you're ready to copy. Roger. I am ready to copy. Very good. The instructions are as follows. First, confirm that the spaceport is ready to receive colonists. Then zoom out to access the special projects menu, or select the orbital view icon. Then you'll see that the colonist migration project is now available. Click Add to initiate the project. Do you copy that procedure? Yes, I copied your instructions. Great. As long as you have the migration project assigned to a spaceport, shuttles will run between Earth and Mars. The more spaceports you have assigned to this project, the more colonists will arrive. You're responsible for producing enough food, enough water, and enough habitats for the colonists. Monitor these resources carefully. I will, Doctor Foster. Roger that. Houston out. All right. The first colonists are on their way to Mars. All that is left to do is wait for their arrival. Once they get here, there will be no turning back. This is it. How do I feel about that? I am excited. Meeting a human other than Dr. Foster will be fascinating. We will be able to learn so much about each other.